Uh, so probably that I was actually interested in the topic. So um, I basically had about 45 minutes, I think it was, to go away and read some of the materials that they'd given me. Um, and it was looking at the tension between freedom of speech and then some broadcasting regulations, so um, what they're allowed to show on TV. I think it was to do with um, an animal rights campaign um, and some like quite gruesome images they wanted to put on the TV. So that was really interesting, I think, and that was what struck me most, that I was coming across material I hadn't really even thought about before, that this was a problem. Um, so yeah, the fact that I had to think on my feet, but it wasn't too difficult because it's something that when you're interested in it, you want to think about it. So um, yeah, it was interesting, I think. So I was struck by the room itself. When I entered the interview room uh, and I met Matt Dyson and Joe Miles, my interviewer, it was a very, very nice room with sofas and a fireplace. And they invited me to sit down with them. So I was very, very surprised because I expected more of an office-type interview, a very professional setting. But I think at Cambridge, they want you to feel at home. So during the interview then itself, it was quite friendly and it was more like a fireside chat with two very knowledgeable professors about anything on, about, on the law and about yourself. So I was very surprised by that because I thought it would be hardcore, they would be focused on the issue at hand, and that they would be very structured in the way they ask you questions. But uh, my interview, I was surprised. It was relaxed and very friendly. We, I got uh, except from the torture convention and we asked a bunch of scenarios. Uh, so I think one of the last questions was really, really complex and I didn't even know where to start thinking about it. I didn't even know what step one was, let alone the conclusion. And I just sat there for a bit, just trying to just just trying to sort it out in my head and I was talking aloud about what was confusing me and I didn't understand and finally I just said I have no idea how to progress with this and uh, she just kind of laughed and I asked um, so just out of curiosity what is the answer because I don't know how to even start reaching it and she said oh this doesn't have an answer and I don't know what it should be either so let's just move on <laughs> kind of thing so I was like okay Probably not the best thing to say I give up, but, you know, maybe not so bad. Not really, I mean, because I had kind of been preparing myself to eventually break down at some point. Uh, from Because, you know, the questions do get increasingly harder. And I was kind of prepared for the other aspects. I think it's just the general style in which we approached it at the beginning, that threw me off a little. I remember being surprised when I first walked in and it was sofas and armchairs everywhere. I was expecting a kind of really formal, across a table setting or something like that, but it was like you could have been in someone's living room, so I remember that was surprising. And also put me at ease quite a bit because, yeah, I was just sat in a big comfy armchair. Again, didn't really feel like I was being interviewed, so that was nice. So definitely, as uh, well, before the interview, I was very, very uh, worried and stressed. Especially after having done the test in the morning, I, I felt unprepared because I, had, I didn't do uh, law at my A-levels. So I was very uh, worried about the type of questions that they could ask. But I, I remember I took about, like, a time off, like an hour before my interview. I went to McDonald's just to take a breather and relax and just get away from college life because... Uh, your interview will take place in college and it's just nice to step out of it, get yourself reorganised before you go back into the interview. So that was my method of approaching the stress and the worry of the interview. Yeah, so I was kind of worried that I would say something um, very stupid. Uh, I was uh, worried because I was speaking to like someone from Cambridge University. Uh, and just general bag of nerves about the interview. <laughs> I think as with any interview, just worried that I was going to get asked something and have no idea how to answer. Um, but that wasn't really a problem on the day because obviously you prepare for it, so there's the que obvious questions like why law? You expect that that's going to come, so you have an answer to it. And then the more on-the-spot questions, 
it wasn't a problem if I didn't know the answer because they can guide you to an answer and often I've been told after that they want to get you to a place where you don't know the answer so it is actually a good thing if you find that you're struggling to think of something um, and yeah they guide, guided me through it when I wasn't quite sure so. Um, so first of all just made sure I knew the obvious thing that everything you've written on your personal statement just have an opinion on it as well not just so that you haven't just name dropped a book or an author or anything reflect on I reflected on what I'd written about and what I thought about it um, and another thing I did which was seems, sounds a bit silly but I always tell everyone who's asked me for advice about um, the Cambridge interview to do this they give you the name of your interviewers so I just looked on YouTube at some videos of them talking and it's just one less unknown on the day. You go in the room, you've heard how they're going to sound. Um, so you just feel like you already know them and yeah, that put me at ease a lot. Um, and yeah, preparing question answers to the obvious questions, um, things like why law, um, why Cambridge, why this course, those kind of things. If you go in knowing that you've got some kind of stock answers prepared, again, you're put quite a bit more at ease. So being an international student, I, I try to catch up with English news. So I remember a day before the interview, I went to the stores and just bought a few newspapers. So the night before, I just read up on different areas of the UK. So any pertinent issues and just think about the news articles and how they might re relate to the law, I think it would be quite useful. Um, I found... Uh, I think there were some sample case studies I found online of uh, what you could put, uh, the kind of questions they could ask you at an interview or like the kind of accepts that they would give. Uh, so I just kind of practiced that with my parents, with my friends. So they'd ask me and they'd look at me with blank expressions and I'd have to stumble my way through. Uh, so I did that a few times. Don't feel the need to answer as soon as the interviewers finish the question. It's perfectly all right and probably even expected that you take a second or two to kind of just think through the question, think about what you want to say and then walk through your answer in a reasonable, in a rational manner. So. Don't just jump to your conclusion and then backtrack and explain why you reached that conclusion. Just kind of say, okay, yeah, so this is step one and this is followed by step two and therefore this is the logical answer for this scenario. That really helps you calm down as well because you're kind of going in a logical progression so you don't need to start freaking out about, oh my God, what am I saying? Because you kind of have an idea of where you're going with this. And secondly, and most importantly, I think, is be true to yourself. Don't try to project an image of someone you're not. I would say, I know you probably have been told it so many times, but really try to enjoy it because that is how supervisions work here. So if you find that you've come out and you've absolutely hated it, um, if, I don't know, you let nerves get the better of you or anything, um, yeah, you've really got to try and see if you could see yourself in that learning environment. Um, and if you can do that, you'll feel a lot better about it, whatever the outcome is. Um, also, another thing I remember, don't be unnerved if one of your interviewers is a bit more quiet or kind of good cop, bad cop or anything like that. I remember one of mine hardly said anything. And now I know her quite well and she's absolutely lovely, but at the time I was quite scared. But don't be worried about that at all. Just... Yeah, do your best and really um, think out loud. So um, if there's a question that you're not sure of the answer to, you can say, oh, I'm just thinking aloud here or um, just walk them through your thinking process. And then it really doesn't matter if you don't get the right answer. And there might not even be a right answer. They just want to see your thought process. So yeah, relax, enjoy it and think aloud would be, I think, my three main things. So I think one of the biggest tips that I have for you during the interview itself is to always think before you speak. So I was asked a very difficult question, which I, at that moment, I really didn't know how to approach it. 
So I told my interviewers that I needed some time to think, and I took about half a minute. It was a bit awkward during the interview itself, I must admit. Uh, the pause, and they were just looking at me expectantly. But after 30 seconds, when I had gathered my thoughts and came up with a structured way to answer the question, I, I just gave the answer to them. So I think one of the biggest advice is to always think before you speak. Do not just go on and ramble about something without structure. As a good lawyer or a good law student, you will need to have structure in everything you do. And another good advice I can give you is to always voice out your thoughts. So every time you make an argument, you have to go through every step of it. Even something that you think is obvious, you should really let your interviewer know how you arrived at that conclusion and the steps needed before you arrive at that conclusion. It really shows clarity in your thoughts. And I think the interviewers look out for the way you approach a question and the logic that you use to answer such questions. But in general, just try not to freak out so much about it. I mean, obviously, you're going to be uh, nervous before an interview. And I'm not saying don't be. There's no way you can stop. But uh, when you're in, in the interview, try not to fixate on your errors or the things which you think you could have said b better but you realize five seconds too late just kind of go on with it and try try to think of it as a conversation with someone you've never had the chance to meet before you're meeting an eminent academic and you're getting to kind of just sit and have a casual discussion for half an hour that's an amazing opportunity independent of whether you get in or not and just try to treat it as such and have fun. Yeah. I think I was also struck by the fact that they didn't really ask me why I wanted to, to study law. They were more focused on like the academic uh, interest that I had in law, which I was happy to discuss. So I think uh, students who might be preparing for the interview could focus more on the real reason they want to study law, the, the, as in the academic reasons behind it, not uh, to do with career, for example. I mean, of course, career is important, but I think that... The, the fellows or the supervisors here would be more interested in knowing why you, you really are interested in the subject itself. I think it's important to also have a passion for the subject itself because when you study here in Cambridge, uh, you'll be given a lot of readings and a lot of work to do over the term and even during the holidays. So having a passion for the subject itself, even the, what people would call the drier parts of the subject, will be very, very useful. And I do think fellows and supervisors look out for that trait in the people that they interview. I think they did. I thought I, it would be something very scary and I'd just come out and burst into tears. But I really genuinely enjoyed my interview.